Hello everyone, my name is Elena Feldman and I am very pleased to participate in the today's event uh, dedicated to such an important topic as uh, cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is an extensive concept. It has include legal and technical aspects of uh, cybersecurity. Uh, computer forensics, fighting against cyber crimes, and much more. Let me tell you a few words about my bio and my scientific interests in this area. I am uh, currently professor of uh, Department of Computer Security and Applied Algebra at uh, Chelyabin State University, Russia. And uh, I am a uh, founder of FLAB Forensic Laboratory and also founder of Cybersecurity Center Russia. I am current member of the Chamber of Forensic Expert and also Forensic Scientist. And just a person who is not indifferent to the problems of fighting against cybercrime. My topic today is uh, problems of investiga investigating crimes in cyberspace. Uh, today uh, we will define cyberspace, uh, determine types of crimes committed uh, there and find out uh, what would help to fight crime from the perspective of an uh, imaginary global forensic community. We will also discuss uh, the shortcomings of international legislation, as well as almost complete absence of international cooperation in such matters. Uh, well defined, uh, cyberspace uh, is a virtual space for work and entertainment created with uh, computer technologies. Here we mean that the cyberspace consists of the Internet, networks of organizations, uh, communication networks, as well as all the devices that create these networks and the connections between them. Accordingly, every element of this cyberspace can be a subject to criminal influence. As we all already know, uh, in every country the number of crimes in cyberspace is uh, increasing year by year. If we look at any open statistics, we will see uh, all these trends. In particular, we will see, for example, such a trend. If five uh, years ago it was easier for the criminal to steal a wallet in the bus, uh, then today we will find only a credit card in the wallet. And uh, it is impossible to withdraw money uh, from a card without a PIN code. Therefore, such criminal activity chooses uh, other ways. Uh, vector of committing crimes are already in cyberspace. So now uh, we have old style crimes in cyberspace, such as uh, hacking, uh, production of viruses and trojans, and also new types of crimes are added, such as stealing money on the internet by uh, using social engineering and uh, many other types of fraud. Many cybersecurity experts also point to the cybercrime as a service trend, which means that criminals do not need to be highly qualified to commit crimes in uh, cyberspace. Uh, they just need to subscribe to a service uh, that will provide them with all the infra infrastructure they need to commit crimes. Absolutely all types of crimes have a common feature. They 
uh, use short-term infrastructure as well as all digital evidences in it. The infrastructure for committing a crime can consist of a set of different virtual servers and uh, a set of virtual private networks illegally purchased phone numbers and so on. Uh, but almost always uh, this infrastructure is distributed and it is uh, distributed between countries to complicate investigations and obfuscate evidences infrastructure is created in different jurisdictions and then the investigation process take place uh, it almost almost always runs into foreign jurisdictions accordingly science uh, we know that criminal infrastructures exist for a very short time the possible investigator needs to do requests and wait for their responses from other governments criminal service uh, and communication channels will be already distracted by the time of the response and uh, in some cases uh, they will be already distracted uh, by the time of the request the tactics of uh, investigating all crimes are essentially the same and uh, also well known and almost always uh, include uh, some kind of reverse engineering of this committed crime in the case of a uh, cyberspace crime uh, reverse engineering of the infrastructure chain always take takes place uh, namely to determine networks uh, virtual servers and devices as uh, well as how it was done and at this moment then someone is looking for a chain of committing a crime it turns out uh, that the links of this chain do not belong to the jurisdiction of a certain state also uh, there exists a well-known police organization interpol which was created for such interaction but as i said uh, the main problem is that the criminal infrastructures uh, exist for a very short time and the relevant police uh, will not have time to receive information on time uh, criminals either have uh, good IT skills or rent stable infrastructure from highly qualified market participants today uh, in the process of development of containerization and uh, other modern information technologies uh, setting up each new server or a device uh, takes only a few minutes accordingly shifting operations uh, to new virtual servers by criminals takes also minutes moreover in the case of renting services uh, this can happen without any interruptions in the implementation of uh, criminal activity uh, thus uh, the global forensic community is faced with the impossibility of investigating such crimes in cyberspace for example uh, the police of country number one uh, starts an investigation and finds uh, digital evidences that lead to the virtual server on another country, number two. Uh, the police uh, must request an image of the virtual server in another country. Uh, the processing of uh, such requests will take over a month and uh, during this period we understand that uh, the server will no longer exist and the same uh, will happen to all digital evidences 
that could show police uh, where to go to next. Uh, this is uh, the big problem. Uh, Interpol uh, mechanisms uh, do not work in this case. Uh, since it uh, requires very fast interaction between the countries involved in the infrastructure chains. I believe uh, that we forensic scientists uh, cannot fully study the methods of inv investigation just as uh, the police cannot fully engage uh, in such investigations across uh, cyberspace until uh, the interaction between our countries moves uh, to another level. Uh, this level should be very fast, uh, without a lot of paperwork and requests, uh, responses and etc. Uh, this interaction should be based on openness, trust and transparency of the interaction process between all the jurisdictions involved. We must all understand that crimes are now being committed in cyberspace against people, not against someone's business interests, not against states and governments, but against ordinary people, against our parents, against our children and relatives. And then we talk about people. Citizenship is of no importance, as we do not care about citizenship of criminals. Criminals uh, must be punished in any country. Uh, we come to the conclusion that it is necessary to create a platform uh, for international interactions, which will allow to download cl clearly regulated information and, and uh, on the other hand, allow other participants to use this information online. If we consider, for example, the blockchain, uh, then they created similar platform with the blockchain technologies, it will, take, uh, it will make possible to create the necessary fast exchange of information transparently and with a high level of trust between all participants of this platform. The world has already changed and the old regulations no longer work. Moreover, uh, with uh, such platform, forensic scientists can use historical data to predict new threats and crimes against humans, and new products can be developed uh, to analyze in international trends in both cybercrime and cybersecurity. And I hope uh, that our today's speech about these issues uh, will make you think of a different level uh, of international interaction on cybercrime issues and also that the scientific community will be able to communicate about creation of trusted platforms for the informational exchange on cybercrime to international organizations. I would also like to touch on such opportunity as the analysis of new cybercrime and trends. Uh, I mean, uh, if our community of scientists could have uh, global data on cybercrime from such platform and also if we analyzed information from uh, various sources, uh, then uh, with the help of uh, big data technologies, we could predict new incidents, uh, could predict uh, new trends in cybercrime. Uh, and based uh, on this predicted data, law enforcement agencies around the world could prevent such crimes. I repeat uh, that the main task of law enforcement agencies and uh, 
forensic scientists is and uh, will be the protection of people from such crimes. Not only investigation on cyber crimes, but also their prevention around the world. Many information security companies uh, around the world are already analyzing information from various uh, sources related to cybercrime. And we learn uh, new trends from them in the form of annual reports. But for the community of scientists, uh, this data is not enough. Uh, we must come to the decision that we need raw data. Computer forensics as a science must also be transformed. Uh, it must now deal not only with methods <coughs> of analyzing information uh, to search and consolidate uh, digital evidences, but also must deal with crime prevention. Computer forensics as a science uh, we have to analyze and search for new trends in cybercrime, classify them, uh, use big data technologies and artificial intelligence, apply mathem mathematical statistics and other applied areas of mathematics to achieve uh, these goals. And if we compare the two entities, the first is uh, investigation of crimes in cyberspace and the second is the trend analytics then after some time we will learn how to predict where this or that crime will occur tomorrow in which country and by that method it will be carried out uh, since uh, as we have already said uh, crime in cyberspace is changing, skills of criminals is growing. It is worth talking about uh, that a uh, computer forensic should be like today. What skills and which knowledges does he need? I am uh, periodically look for training materials and courses on computer forensics. I try to find something new in forensic courses, but unfortunately I can't find it. Almost all courses in uh, computer forensics points uh, to the fact uh, that the student must analyze logs and some artifacts in operating systems, must use uh, any frameworks and etc. But in none of the forensic courses, they teach to think widely. Uh, they don't teach to think like a criminal. Uh, they don't teach basic knowledges. The skills of a forensic, uh, of a computer forensics are, uh, first of all, good basic uh, knowledges. Uh, such as uh, knowledge of networks, also uh, deep knowledge of operating systems, such as knowledge of how virtual memory works, what machine codes are, uh, knowledge and uh, debugging skills, what uh, inter interrupts and processes are, and much, much more. Uh, the profession of computer forensic is the consolidation of all areas of information technology, mathematics and uh, physical processes. This is a uh, really difficult profession. It is not uh, enough uh, just to run a framework and learn how to retrieve uh, data from devices. Uh, therefore, me as a person who has been engaged, engaged in uh, computer forensic science for 15 years, not only as a forensic, 
but also as a scientist who has been teaching these courses for many years. I want to tell uh, those who participate in this conference today and have chosen the path of a computer forensic or just going to choose this. I want to say that you have to study a lot, study every day and will be very difficult. Uh, for me, this is not just a profession, uh, this is the way of life, uh, when every day you learn something new, and it is hard. But at the same time, uh, when you understand that because of these actions, the world around you is changing, and it is very cool. Thank you for attention, have a nice day. Goodbye.